And the, the history of 5,000 years of hemp is one of the most interesting histories of all, and, it, and it, every turn, it shows more about the people that were making the history than, than it tells you about the hemp. And uh, it, it wasn't until wasn't until the 20th century in uh, North America that there was a uh, passed any legislation uh, prohibiting cannabis, and and that all changed. And yet there's some right wing wingers, that, that, you know, these days nuts. But they, they want to have they got project for a new 20th century in this country. Have they, have they gone completely daft? Should they be allowed to vote? Hey, Hillary. Okay, we got. Uh, Harry Brown here. We got uh, Hillary coming on. Hillary Listener. Thank you, Harry. Who can and does make a difference. Thank you, Harry. And one of the things Harry was just talking about is cannabis and hemp, one of the many forms. So we have this big bud contest going on. There are a lot of things we've been adapting to this weekend. The weather didn't start out how we were planning, so things changed. Having a big gathering like this, you never know how everything's going to come together. So one thing that didn't come quite together as planned was entries for the Big Bud contest. We had two entries up at the top of the hill, but we can still take entries down here on stage. So if you brought your Big Bud with you, we would love for you to come down to the stage here so people can take a look at it and we can actually try and do some judging of it. We also have Troy McCutcheon and Tina McCutcheon here who actually did enter their buds in at the top of the hill and have a trophy for actually participating, but we encourage everyone to participate right now. And one of the things Harry was just talking about, another way you can participate once you leave here, is making sure that this plant stays legal, making sure that people can use this plant for medicine, for fuel, for fiber, for making a living outside of here and continuing for here because the only way we're able to have gatherings like this this isn't something that the federal government is authorizing or is even legal under federal law but this is being allowed to happen in this place because hundreds of people for now generations have been working on this this is 25 years a quarter of a century of gatherings for cannabis liberation on this hill of challenging the drug war that is taking people's lives and livelihoods away for no good reason. And people have actually been able to organize and push back and be able to maintain our basic rights to grow our plants and have our own medicine and make a living and be happy where we are. But that's only going to happen if we can continue to work together and communicate and adapt to everything that keeps changing right now. Because as Harry's saying, there's a lot of forces out there that don't want to see this legal, that don't want pe to see people be able to grow a plant that allows them to treat their health conditions without having to buy the pharmaceuticals that could allow them to have their own fuel and fiber without destroying the land that they're living on. So that's what we're facing, but we've made a lot of progress in Maine. We just got a bill passed to allow growing industrial hemp. Now the big challenge is to get the De Department of Agriculture to permit it, but that only happened. I know Harry mentioned the right-wingers try really trying to make this illegal. But it's all over the place when it comes to the federal level. It's right wing, it's left wing identified who, people who would like to see this illegal. The people who've made this legal are across the political spectrum. The bill to allow industrial hemp in Maine was sponsored by Republicans, Democrats, uh, a state representative from right here, Larry Dunphy, who's been outspoken in support of this, who just left the Republican Party and is independent and actually taking a stand on this. We need to support candidates who really do this and keep in communication after we leave the gathering. So I would like to see, does anyone have some big buds down here or Troy and Tina McCutcheon, the winners of this? Anything else down here for buds? We got some buds. So Troy and Tina McCutcheon have some beautiful white widow here. I don't know if either of you would like to talk about how you grew it or anything you'd like to say about it. All organic, is it outdoor, indoor? Indoor, main grown? Main grown white widow right here. I think some of the best stuff in the country right now is being grown right here in Maine. And it's, it's true and it's affordable because we actually have land to grow it on and people are being generous and sharing and taking care of each other. 
and I've seen some of the best stuff, best variety in one place right here on this hill, and this is not happening anywhere else. So I encourage everyone to check out what's available, and if you have any extra to give, there are so many people who can't be here today, who would love to be here, who've come here over the decades, who, have, who are dealing with cancer, who are dealing with all sorts of health conditions that they need quantity of this really to help. A lot of people now are making Rick Simpson oil and concentrates and salves and juices. So right now, anyone who's harvesting, especially if you've been growing it organic, save all the parts of the plant. It's, it fits clean. People can use it for tinctures, for salves, for juice right now. If you go up to the big tent, there's Maine Green Cross up there. There's other groups at, that can help get this. There's a uh, CCM, Compassionate Caregivers of Maine, I, I've seen a number of them around here, Medical Marijuana Caregivers of Maine, different groups that will work to make sure that patients can get this for free, and um, feel free to talk to me, but there's a lot of people in need around here, so please share your bud, and thank you for this beautiful bud from Troy and Tina, and this is going to Harry Brown, so... Thank you very much. Happy 25th uh, anniversary and congratulations to the winners of the Big Bud Contest, Troy and Tina McCutcheon. And now we have the Bob Band coming up for a second set, so thank you very much.